Hey folks, Black Cross here, and welcome back to the PlayStation 2 Legacy bonus content where we take a look at any particular subject that involves the PlayStation 2 itself. And this is more or less of a sequel, if you will, to a previous video that I did, basically talking about the Logitech PlayStation 2 wireless controller. And uh, what's funny enough, I've had a lot of people actually talking about that and asking me questions and stuff like that, one of which was more or less of a, I suppose you could say, a public request? Uh, I don't normally do requests. In fact, really, in all honesty, I haven't had anyone asking me to do certain things in, like, forever. So this was, like, the one time where I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and do this. So to Quentin D. Comber? Uh, Quentin D. Coomber? Coomber? I, I hope I pronounced that last name right. It's, it's C-O-O-M-B-E-R. So I imagine it's Coomber? Like, Doomber? No, that doesn't even sound... That sounds even weirder. But anyway... Thank you, Quentin, for the request. I finally got the video made. It just took a while because obviously it was COVID-19. Shipping is absolute shit. And most of the stuff I got from eBay. Now, disclaimer before we even go into the video itself. All of these are pre-owned. And so anytime you buy certain things pre-owned, you are going to have a few flawed controllers. Now, that's not to say that they're bad. But the way that they work aren't exactly well done in my personal opinion. But aside from a few small tidbits and stuff like that, these are, of course, the Pelican controllers themselves. Now, I got three different Pelican controllers to talk about. Uh, but there are other ones. One that I recently looked into was the fact that it was called the Predator Pelican Controller. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but first off, let's start first start off with a standard Pelican controller. And this one right here that I got, uh, I got it not just because of the Pelican controller by itself, but also too, it comes with its own carrying case. Now, I'm pretty sure Black Magic, if I'm not mistaken, is like a uh, off-brand accessory type thing. So it's not, uh, it's not a Pelican's own design carrying case but it was another corporation that made this and well I have to say looks pretty good like the carrying case itself is actually really nice in my personal opinion I actually don't remember very many personal controller carrying case the only time you ever saw like a personal carrying case was like you know if you had like the system carrying case itself and then there was like a little pouch for like the controller and stuff but uh, this particular carrying case right here obviously has the shell thing to where you can put your controller and the dongle on here. It also comes with its own mini little uh, screwdriver. Obviously it's for like keeping up with maintenance for the controller, like say for example, uh, getting the batteries out and stuff like that. Next to that, deep inside the crevice of this carrying case is like a little... Uh, <laughs> little towelette for the controller now <laughs> i don't know why you would go to just a stream for a controller i mean given how some things are i can imagine why but to have a cloth material thing for controllers just seems a little bit overdone in my personal opinion but that's just me personally but, aside from the carrying case, which personally, I kind of wish we had more carrying cases for your controllers these days. I don't think we see that now, you know, given the fact that we're now in an age where we have HD rumbles and stuff like that, even though the Joy-Con drift is kind of an issue right now, what with the Switch and the PS5. But, I would love to see actual carrying cases, or at least, uh display things for like the controllers and stuff like that we see more of that in diy projects rather than actually company owned stuff and i kind of wish we would see more of that but anyway let's finally talk about the controller itself now this is the controller right here technically it comes in various uh i've got the they call it the gray but it's more of a metallic color if you will from what it looks like it looks more metallic just judging by the look of it but, uh, you also have the dongle right here that comes with it. Now, let's first talk about, uh, the battery. 
being that it's two double A's. And the way you get into those is by unscrewing the two sides, lifting them off, and then put your batteries in there. The second thing you should know is how to sync them up. Now, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned it in my previous video, but I think I did, I'm pretty sure I did, where in the Logitech, the sync was on a button from the dongle, and it reads the controller that's nearby that's turned on. In this case, basically, you just match up the uh, channel that matches up with the dongle, and they automatically sync up, which is a nice thing to have. So say, for example, you have two of these things and you have one set for channel one and one set for channel two. Naturally, you would just switch this to whatever channel you want them to be on and it will recognize it and connect it almost instantly. Now, with that being said, the controller itself, uh, I do have a little bit of some uh, complaints with it. Complaint number one are the R1 and well, R2 and L2 shoulder buttons, trigger buttons rather. Now, let's go ahead and pull out a standard, uh, I don't really have a, I don't have my uh, Logitech with me at the moment, uh, but let's take a look at the PlayStation 4 shoulder buttons. They're basically, um, they're, they're leveled, if you will, you know, they're right there. Whereas in this case, they're a little bit what you call slanted downward. And, um, you know, on the one hand, this isn't really a major problem, except for pre-owned uses of these things. So whenever you get a pre-owned one, the biggest thing you'll have noticed is that the shoulder buttons for R2 and L2 are a little bit, I guess you could say gummy in some cases. Not so much stuck, but they definitely feel like it's those that they haven't been used in a long while, and so it takes a lot to really get them in. And so depending on who you are and stuff like that, you'll probably press the bottom parts of it and realize that they're not really registering. However, in this case, if you push them towards like the center or towards like the top parts of the controller, right here, they will actually go in a lot more easier. So in other words, it's meant for you to hold it like this, where you have your, uh, I suppose, in my case, the middle fingers on both hands uh, fully registered onto the uh, triggers, not just downward, but like up here, and then they will register. But in other cases, it's relatively easy to get them loosened up to where they can actually register itself. But beyond that, uh, I feel like it's as if it's a little bit smaller, actually. Like this controller itself is actually really, really tiny. Compare it to like the PS4 controller versus this controller right here. I feel like it's actually smaller. I don't know what made me feel it like it is, but it's, it's a little bit smaller. It's not too small, judging by how I hold it up and stuff like that, but it is a little bit smaller, it feels like. It feels like I'm holding a child's play toy rather than an actual controller itself. Although in terms of durability, which I'm not going to be throwing this everywhere and expect it not to break. No, it's going to eventually break if I did that. But I mean, quality-wise, it feels pretty good. It feels, pr feels pretty solid. It also has these rubber grips here, which I kind of like them, you know, compared to like standard plastic that you would get. Having a little bit of a grip on the controllers actually makes them a little bit nicer to have. Overall, though... If I have to say, though, my biggest complaint is just, like I said, the shoulder buttons. And then it does feel kind of tiny. In terms of response, it's actually pretty good. And really, I have no major complaints. Again, the analog sticks are a little bit stiff, but that's probably because of it being pre-owned and, you know, after a while, not being used. It takes a while to get them worked in and stuff like that. It's not awful, but I do wish it was a little bit, I guess I could say a little bit better better built, you know, or a little bit wider for that matter. The second controller that I got, this one's technically more or less the same, but is slightly different. And this actually coincides with a particular subject that we'll get into in just a sec, but in this controller case, this was a GameStop brand controller. Apparently GameStop, back in its prime, uh, commissioned Pelican to make a GameStop exclusive uh, controller 
to where they can sell in their stores. And uh, I have to say, I was actually kind of surprised to see a GameStop brand. I mean, it makes sense to see a GameStop brand type uh, video game merchandise or whatever. But in terms of video game accessories, it's something you don't see all the time. Or at least nowadays you don't see it because of, well, GameStop situation now. But beyond the logo itself, followed by the fact that it's translucent, it's practically the same thing. You know, same buttons, same shoulder uh, trigger buttons and stuff like that. This one was a little bit easier to uh, push the buttons and stuff like that. But there was one big thing that I noticed, and that was the analog sticks for the GameStop controller. Now again, keep in mind, these are pre-owned, so chances are they're not all going to function the same way as they should be, as if they were brand new. But one of the things I noticed that the GameStop analog controller has somewhat of a drift to them. Um, if you're not familiar, Nintendo Switches and PS5's controllers are right now experiencing a thing called drift. And that's after long periods of times, uh, the controller, whenever you're not touching it, the character or whatever happens will just start moving. And that's because of the analog sticks, the way that they're built and stuff like that. And this particular controller right here is already experiencing some form of drift just by me playing about three, four hours of game with this controller but beyond that still the same problems that i have with it still feels kind of tiny compared to a standard controller and then the shoulder uh the uh trigger buttons i'm not a big fan of the position itself i'm sure after like a good long while you get used to it and stuff like that but for me i'm so used to the standard controllers and i get i get it i get it but at the same time i prefer the standard and with these things the way they're positioned it's a little bit off-putting however though i do want to go ahead and address something and that is how to sync up with a different dongle now let me show you something here with the with the pelican controllers themselves while yes i have a gamestop and a pelican brand they're both actually the same they both function the same in other words whatever channel you've got these set on and whatever channel you've got the controller set on, they will work, including crossing over. For example, I actually tried out the GameStop controller onto the Pelican receiver thing, and all you gotta do is just switch the channel. It takes about a little bit of figuring, uh, configuring, like, you know, go back and forth with it, but eventually they will lock in place. In other words, they will connect each other. And I had no problems connecting. Which is a good thing because you want to be able to have it to where it connects with it. In terms of these controllers, these particular controllers and these particular uh, dongle receivers, they actually work with each other. They cross over with each other. So that's a good thing if, you're, if you only have the controller and you don't have the dongle, you can always purchase a dongle so long as it has the channel switch itself and it should connect just fine. Remember, that's the, uh, the Pelican brand only and not any other one. So say for example someone says, oh well I couldn't get mine to work. Well the question is, are they Mad Cats or are they Pelicans? Oh, you get what I'm saying? They have to be the Pelican brand. Now the third controller I do want to talk about because this is probably the most wildest controller I've ever seen. The most wildest. So are you ready for this? I don't think you are. So Next to GameStop, Pelican apparently gets commissioned to do other type of controller types. And with this one, was Nerf. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. Nerf, the same people that's responsible for like footballs and stuff like that, as well as those guns and everything like that. They had Pelican make, or a collab, whatever you want to use, to make a PlayStation 2 wireless controller. When I saw this, I was like, no way, no way, I've gotta buy this. I don't care, I gotta buy this, but I wanted to make certain that I have both the controller and the dongle because the dongle is different than the, place, than the standard uh, Pelican controllers. I'm calling them standard for a reason. But with the Nerf controllers, they are differently built. For starters, this whole outer shell, this whole outer shell 
is made of the same materials used to make their Nerf footballs. So if you're familiar with the Nerf football or basketball or whatever, they have that same exact squishy feel. Now, for any normal person, this would be absolutely bonkers and weird. But it actually feels comfortable. Like, okay, remember how I talked about these uh, rubber grips and stuff like that? I prefer this myself. I prefer the Nerf controller. It feels so comfortable. Now, record, the rumble feature is removed from these particular controllers. Now, keep in mind, these don't have rumble features either due to the battery, but this one right here, they don't have rumble feature either, but it still feels so comfortable and it feels very light too. Like compared to the standard Pelican controllers, much less the standard controllers themselves, the Nerf is extremely paper light weight. We're talking like the second you pull it out of the box or whatever, you're just like, oh, like you're afraid to break it almost. But keep in mind, it is Nerf. So, of course, it's going to have that weird spongy feel and stuff like that. And I think some people may be turned off by that. But personally, I kind of like it. I do like how it feels. Now, in terms of controls and everything like that, it feels nice. But I will admit that the shoulder buttons are a little bit on the tiny side. Like, seriously, they are extremely tiny compared to, like your normal standard uh, PlayStation 2 controllers. They're extremely tiny and they are really close together. So you're like neck to neck if you're wanting to push the controllers. Now, unless if you're like this, then maybe it won't be that big of a deal, but I'm usually holding it like this. So your perspective might be different. But another issue that I had, and this one, I don't think they realized it whenever they did it, was involving with the analog controllers. Now here's the thing, no drift problems so far, no drift problems whatsoever. But when it comes down to these particular things right here, depending on the game depends on whether or not you're gonna have to apply a little bit more pressure just to get them down there. So say for example, you're playing a game like, oh, Kingdom Hearts for example, games where it features a walk and then a run mechanic. You know, if you slightly tilt the, uh, analog stick the character will walk and then if you push it all the way down they will start to run well i noticed this whenever i was doing that occasionally the game will register it as if it was just walking so i don't know if it's because the sensitivity is very very uh low in these controllers or something like that but i had to really press it downward and i think what it is the barrier around the analog controller where that nerf is like you see how it looks right here that nerf is kind of preventing it from being pushed all the way down. And so with that, you have to push a little bit forward pressure just to get it to where it would register. I only experienced that a couple of times, but it's not enough to where I think it ruins the overall experience. Again, this is just a weird thing. And another weird thing too, unlike the two Pelican controllers that I had, where they have AA batteries requirement, this one requires two triple a's so that's an unusual battery selection i mean it makes sense for the size of the battery that is required but triple a's you know in terms of tiers of battery uses double a is like the number one used battery in the nation next to that is triple a's and then next to that is like c's or d's and stuff like that but just to see that this is running on triple a batteries it's a little bit unusual now you might be asking yourself Okay, well, let's say, for example, you only have one or the other, and you're needing to get the other. So, what happens? How do you synchronize it? Well, I actually did some digging, and according to what I read, it is stated that all you gotta do is press the L3 and R3 button, and they will sync up with the receiver. Like, as soon as you plug this into the PlayStation 3, the signal will start looking for something to connect to, and if you press the L3 and R3 at the same time, it will then almost automatically connect. From what I've read, and by means, I mean I looked it up and found like a, 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 P, a PDF, uh, 
digital manual or whatever, where it shows talking about how to sync up with the receiver box. And it's like, okay, well, that's a little bit easier, but at the same time, that's kind of weird. Another cool thing about this controller right here, that it comes in a variety of colors. This is the orange one that I've got, but they also have a red one, a blue one, and a gray one. So this is actually pretty cool to see right here. Now, let's talk about the Predator controller that I mentioned earlier. Now, the reason why I didn't get that was because number one, I didn't really want to buy another controller without knowing if there was like a major difference or not. And number two, I decided to look at the controller to see if there was a major difference. And judging by the way it looks, it's probably not that difference compared to these two controllers right here. Now, here's what I mean whenever I said the phrase that these are the standard Pelican PS2 controllers. Because when you look at the back of the Predator, it's got the same angle of how the R2 and L2 buttons are set where they're so sort of slanted right here and stuff like that. And honestly, I don't know why Pelican has that standard of a control scheme, because keep in mind, keep in mind, you have the standards of how controllers look and stuff like that. With Pelican, they decide to change it up a bit, and I don't know why they went with that change. That's a little bit of an unusual design, I think. I mean, for some people, I think it would work, but for me, it's just, it's kind of weird. So in terms of the quality and the functionality of these controllers, functionality, they function fine on their own. They're okay. There are a few little gripes that I have with them. For example, you know, the analog sticks could use a little work at times. The GameStop one especially has a drift problem. And then the Nerf one, because of the Nerf barrier, it prevents it from being pushed all the way down. And then of course the shoulder buttons are like the biggest problems from all three controllers. Uh, in the Nerf case, they're a little bit tiny. And then in the other two cases, they've got a weird angle to them. But in terms of like usage, um, I could imagine you using them. Are they better than the Logitech controller? No, <laughs> I'm just gonna, t I, I know that's gonna be bad for me to say, but there's a reason why I say the Logitech is actually better than these other controllers. Number one is how it feels, you know? Like I said before, these feel tiny, like as though as if you're holding a much smaller object than you normally should be with a standard controller. Whereas the Logitech controller, it feels fuller. It feels like your whole hand can actually fit into it. I mean, record, the way these were designed, they were obviously designed for children. So if, you're, if you had child-sized hands, Maybe they would fit fine and perfectly, but in a full-grown man's hand, it's a little bit on the tiny side. But then again, there are also tiny controllers for various consoles, so maybe you might get used to that, I don't know. In terms of connectivity, uh, depending on who you are, uh, you may prefer the Pelican Switch thing. Because uh, like I said, all you gotta do is just fiddle with the switches on both the controller and the dongle, and they will connect almost automatically. And then, like I said, I had to look up online to see how this one syncs up with a dongle. And so long as it's a Pelican dongle suited for a Nerf controller, you should press the L3 and R3 button at the same time, and they should uh, uh, connect automatically. So, in terms of it all, if I had to pick, let's say, for example, I had to choose these three controllers, these three right here, which one would I pick? Which one would I more than likely keep? Well, just because of how it feels on the palm of my hand, the Nerf controller. I know that's weird. And trust me, when you hold it long enough and you play around with it and stuff like that and play a game or two with it, and you see to yourself, there is no way this should even exist. And you're right, it really shouldn't because of how fragile Nerf material can be. And so if I used it like on an everyday basis, it would probably tear up real easy. But because of how it feels to the hands, you know, just that Nerf material, that foamy, rubbery grip and stuff like that, the way it feels, it feels very comfortable in my personal opinion. I actually like how it feels versus how the GameStop and the regular Pelican controllers feels. That sounds weird, I know, but that's just how I 
how I wish I could have it. If I could find a way, this is going to be weird, but if I could find somebody out there that can make like leathered or foam like materials like this and have it fit all over the controllers, I will do it. I will do it. Even for my PlayStation 4 controllers, because you think about it, after like two, three hours, it's no big deal, but after seven or eight hours of pure touching plastic and stuff like that, your hand starts to go like, that's, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. You know what I, you know what I mean? Just, I, I like how this feels. It feels like you don't have to worry about having to sling out of your hand, whereas, you know, the standard controllers, there's a good chance that it'll slip out of your hands before you realize it. Well guys, that's going to be it for this bonus content video. I hope this was very in-depth and informative for you guys. Again, I didn't get the Predator controller because obviously I already had three other ones in my possession. But also too, I decided to go deeper into the rabbit hole, as they say, in terms of wireless PlayStation 2 controllers. And when I say down the rabbit hole, there are messes that I didn't even think would exist. And so, this is just the Pelican line of... PlayStation 2 wireless controllers. There will be more in the future, so if you want to check out what other controllers I'll get into eventually, uh, be sure to follow me and all that stuff. I don't do this all the time, but hey, with this controller line, perfect time to get interested in to see what other wireless options there are. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Quentin D. Comber, for suggesting this and everything like that. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Black Cross sign off. Catch you guys later.